Greetings to you again in the wonderful name of Jesus. I trust that you're well. In this segment, we want to talk about the outcomes from the preaching of the gospel. The gospel, as we have stated before, is extremely important. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of his love, the good news of the great benefits that are procured for us by his death, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. The gospel is extremely important. The word of God says in the book of Romans chapter 10, reading verse 13, it says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and who bring glad tidings of good things. The gospel is glad tidings of good things. Now, verse 16 of this same chapter says, But they are not all, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So the gospel must be preached in order for people to call on the name of the Lord. And when they call on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. But how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? People need to believe the gospel. Because the gospel is a bearer, it's a container of good things, of great things, of the will and heart and the desire of God for his people. How shall they believe except the gospel is preached? It says, and how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? In order for people to believe, they ought to hear. Then how will they hear except there is a preacher, except someone proclaims the good news? proclaims the good news. So, people are supposed to be saved. In order for them to be saved, they ought to call. But if they're going to call, they have to believe. If they're going to believe, they have to hear. If they're going to hear, they must be a preacher. The preacher proclaims the good news, the good news of the kingdom of God, the good news of the great and good will of God, of his peace and joy and goodwill. Hallelujah. Now, when the message is preached, when the gospel is preached, there are wonderful things or wondrous things that we find in the gospel. The preaching of the gospel reveals or brings to us a number of things. One, the gospel reveals to us the righteousness of God. The gospel reveals to us right standing with God, how we can have a right relationship with God. When we hear the gospel, we are able to know and understand how we can have a right standing with God. Because in the preaching of the gospel, the authority of the message come, comes through. By authority, the message is proclaimed. The message is proclaimed and people are able to understand how they can have a right standing with God. Secondly, when the message of the gospel is preached, it draws people to repentance. Repentance is not just sorrow over wrongdoing, but repentance is about a change of mind. When one has believed the lie, they need good news. When you read in the book of um, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, you find that um, the Lord Jesus in his earthly ministry, the word of God says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, one, to preach the gospel to the poor. Isn't it interesting that the poor, according to God's word, it's not aid they need as the first, uh, first thing to come to them. They need the gospel. The word of God says he came to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, 
those in captivity need to hear a message to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So you notice that in the ministry of Jesus, what was proclaimed was very important. He taught his disciples as well to proclaim the gospel. If you read in Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 19, it says, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. In Mark chapter 16, uh, reading from verse 15, it declares, Go and preach the gospel to every creature. So the preaching of the gospel is crucial for people to receive the message, for people to be able to repent or have a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of perception. Because God cannot minister his life to his people except they hear the message and when they hear the message, they receive faith for action. The gospel produces faith, which faith drives one to receive the benefits of the gospel. So, when the gospel is preached, it draws people to repentance. It challenges people to have a change of mind. Because in the gospel we discover that God has good thoughts towards us. He has good plans for us. He has hope. He has peace. He has joy. He has deliverance for us. And so the gospel is preached so one can have a change of mind, a change of perception. Instead of seeing darkness and gloom, they are able to see light, life and hope. The gospel produces uh, faith. The gospel produces hope. The gospel challenges people to repentance. Now, number three, when the gospel is preached, the third outcome is the gospel convicts of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. When the gospel is preached, people, when people hear it, they are challenged concerning sin. They are challenged concerning the need to stand in righteousness. And they are alerted concerning future judgment. Very importantly, number four, the gospel creates or produces faith. Romans 10, 17 says, Now faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? So faith comes by hearing. Faith, which is extremely important, we've been talking about this in, in, in some of our previous sessions. Faith is important because it moves us into receiving the benefits of the good news. So when, we, when the gospel is preached, it produces faith. It produces faith. It lets people know what can be realized, what can be done, and how it can be done. So faith is produced when the gospel is preached. Number five, the gospel brings salvation. It brings life. It brings the gift of the Holy Spirit. When the gospel is proclaimed, there are benefits that accompany it. Closely related to this, I would say number six, it brings life, it brings hope, it brings peace, it brings immortality. Very important. When we hear the gospel, the gospel is a bearer, it's a carrier, it's a container, it's, it's a vehicle that has in it lots of good. And when we hear it and receive it, then we receive the benefits that it bears, the benefits that it carries with it. Now, number seven. The Word of God says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Number seven, the gospel delivers from the dominion of sin and of Satan. When one hears the gospel, when people hear the gospel, they receive power. They receive power over sin, power over Satan. Because when they hear the message and receive it and believe it, it produces in them, the word of God says, the power unto deliverance, the power to victory, the power to well-being, 
Okay, so this is very important to understand, and I want to say this again that God has chosen the gospel as his primary vehicle. Anything God wants to do, he proclaims it. Everything God is going to do or deliver to his people, he declares it. He says it. Unless it is received, one cannot receive the benefits of the gospel. So it's very important to know that God's avenue to deliver his blessings and to desires to his people is through the preaching of the gospel. So the gospel delivers one from sin and from the dominion of Satan. The gospel, number eight, warns us concerning future judgment. When we hear the gospel, we understand the heart and the mind of God and we understand that we, it is not God's will for us to suffer judgment. It warns us about judgment. Number nine, the gospel brings condemnation and eternal death when rejected. Now, I want to say that this is very important and allow me to draw your attention to the book of John chapter 3, reading verse 18. John chapter 3, reading verse 18, the Bible declares, He who believes in him is not condemned. That's good news. He who believes in Jesus, he who believes the gospel, is not condemned. In other words, he who believes the good news does not suffer the negative. He who believes the good news does not suffer the negative. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. He who does not receive the gospel, who does not receive him, is condemned already. Now, the reason why the gospel was proclaimed was to deliver us from the condemnation, was to deliver us from the negative, um, from a negative position. But he who does not believe the gospel is condemned already. The verse continues to say, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now I'll repeat this verse. Very important. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. And the reason why he's condemned already is because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The other way to say it, he has not believed the gospel. He has not believed the good news. So the person who does not believe is condemned already is condemned already, but he who believes is not condemned. He who believes is delivered, is set free. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. It's very important to understand that when we believe the gospel, we receive the benefits of the gospel. We receive the positive outcome. We receive the will of God, the desire of God. It is God's will that you are saved. It is God's will that you are victorious. It is God's will that you have life, that you have peace, that you have joy. Even in the circumstances, that, in whatever circumstance of life that you find yourself, it is God's will that you are well, that you experience the victory of the Lord, the peace of God, the life of God. Everything that God has for you comes to you through the gospel. God has no other avenue. The Bible says, through the foolishness or the simplicity of the message preached, God designed that people may be saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21. Through the wisdom of God, God chose the avenue of the gospel, the preaching of the message. The preaching of the message. Nothing complicated. The preaching of the message. You and I have the responsibility to hear the message, to believe the message, to receive the message. And when we do, we receive life, we receive hope, we receive peace, we receive well-being. God has a good plan for you. His plan to bless you. The Lord bless you in Jesus.